Hi, welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgeway. I'm the founder of the Amber Lynn Files and also the Tudor Society website. Also author of several Tudor history books. If you hear any noise in the background, it's just dogs and cats letting themselves into my office. They, uh, they like to sort of browse around the house and see what's going on at the moment. It's very interesting things. We've got building work going on. I'm just trying to record the video before the hammer drill starts going. So, uh, so hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be okay. Okay, I'm going to take you back to 1519 today because on this day in Tudor history or thereabouts, this is the traditional uh, birth date, 22nd of March 1519, given for the birth of a very interesting Tudor lady, someone I find fascinating, Catherine Willoughby, who is also known as Catherine Brandon and Catherine Bertie. Um, Duchess of Suffolk, um, Brandon and Bertie being her married names. And she is a woman who's gone down in history for her patronage of the Reformed uh, religion, Protestant uh, faith, and um, being a patron of uh, reformists, uh, scholars and churchmen. Now, she's a woman who really appeals to me, like Anne Boleyn does, obviously, um, because of one, her reformed faith and her patronage of uh, some great men, um, the Reformation being my kind of second favourite Tudor topic after the Boleyns, and also, number two, because um, we get such wonderful glimpses of her character, her sense of humour, her sarcasm and wit kind of in the primary sources. I mean, how can you not love a woman who called her dog Gardner after Stephen Gardner, um, the bishop, um, and it is said that she dressed this dog in a vestment and processed in a mock parade with her dog sort of dressed as Gardner to humiliate the, uh, the bishop and also to show her opposition to such vestments being worn. And some say that she called the dog Gardner so that she could walk around court uh, and enjoy calling Gardner to heal. And I think that's just superb. I just, I think that really shows something about her, her spirit. Obviously, it didn't make her very popular with Bishop Gardner, but uh, there you go. But let me tell you a few facts about um, Catherine Willoughby, um, the Duchess of Suffolk. Now, she was the daughter of William Willoughby, and he was 11th Baron Willoughby of Ayersby, or Ayersby, not sure how you pronounce it. And her mother was uh, Lady Maria de Salinas who was a Spanish lady who came over from Spain with Catherine of Aragon and served as lady-in-waiting to Catherine of Aragon. So she then met uh, Catherine's father, William, and got married to him. Now, Catherine became Charles Brandon, Duke of Suffolk's ward in 1529, um, following the death of her father. Now, it's, it was quite normal for a child to become a ward of a more prestigious Tudor person or family to kind of give them a sort of a leg up, a, you know, a step up the ladder of kind of success, you know, to help them with their future career. It was like, I suppose, the Tudor equivalent of finishing school. And because her father had died, this also sort of helped her mother because uh, Catherine sort of became the responsibility of Charles Brandon, Duke of Suffolk. But that also meant that he had um, control of her sort of a destiny. He could arrange a marriage for her. And he ended up marrying her himself in September 1533, just months after the death of his um, previous wife, Mary Tudor, Queen of France. Now, Suffolk was about 49 at this time, and Catherine was only 14, so quite an age gap there. Suffolk and Catherine went on to have two sons, Henry and Charles. Um, they were born in 1535 and 1537. 
Sadly, both these boys died, in fact, on the same day, just within an hour or so of each other, um, they caught sweating sickness in the outbreak of uh, 1551, and they died on the 14th of July, 1551. Now, Catherine served Queen Catherine Parr, Henry VIII's sixth and final wife, as one of her ladies. And it was in Catherine Parr's household that the evangelical uh, Catherine uh, Brandon or Willoughby could mix with other like-minded women of the Reformed faith, evangelical women like the Queen herself, but also Anne Seymour, Countess of Hertford, Lady Elizabeth Tyrrett, Jane Dudley, Lady Lyle, um, Lady Joan Denny, and also some event evangelical men who were part of the Queen's household, like Dr. Robert um, Huick, um, Sir Philip Hobie, uh, John Parkhurst. So there was this real evangelical circle around Catherine Parr. It ended up being a bit risky, actually, when Anne Askew was arrested and tortured. Um, the men torturing her were trying to get names out of her, of evangelical women. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they were actually trying to get her to, to name these names and also to help bring the Queen down as well, because there was this evangelical circle at court. Now, the Duke of Suffolk, Charles Brandon, died in August 1545. And in around 1552, Catherine um, married her gentleman usher, Richard Bertie. Um, she went on to have two children um, with him, Susan and Peregrine. In Edward VI's reign, Catherine was a very active patron of Protestants and theologians. But, of course, uh, things were made difficult for her when Mary I came to the throne, Mary I being um, a staunch Catholic. So Catherine and her husband, Richard Bertie, decided to go into exile on the continent uh, to get away from, you know, Mary's Catholic reign and to be with a community of other like-minded Protestants. Although the couple returned to England when Queen Elizabeth I, the Protestant Queen, came to the throne, um, Catherine actually differed uh, with Queen Elizabeth on matters of religion. Uh, Catherine didn't really want this kind of middle ground that um, Elizabeth kind of saw. She didn't think that Elizabeth's religious settlement went far enough in terms of Protestantism. So she kind of chose to keep away from the royal court and instead she spent her time at home in Lincolnshire where she promoted her own religious views. She employed Bible translator Miles Coverdale as a tutor to her children, so she was bringing up her children as Protestants. And Catherine died on the 19th of September 1580, and she was buried in Spilsby Church in Lincolnshire. So there's just a few facts about uh, this well, fascinating to me, uh, Tudor woman, a woman who married the king, um, the king's best friend, sorry, not the king, the king's best friend, Charles Brandon, Duke of Suffolk, uh, a woman who was a patron, a patroness of uh, very important uh, theologians and scholars, a woman who was very good friends with Queen Catherine Parr, and the best thing to me is a woman who had a dog named Gardner because she didn't like Bishop Gardner. I just think that is fantastic. So there you go. We think that she was born on or around uh, this date in 1519. That's Catherine Willoughby, Duchess of Suffolk. You can subscribe to my channel by just clicking around there. You can hit the bell to be notified and do check out my other On This Day in Tudor History videos just to catch up. Um, there are also plenty of other playlists, uh, like there's a questions about Anne Boleyn playlist, or all sorts of uh, videos that you can enjoy on the channel. So do have a good browse around. I'll be back tomorrow with another Tudor History event. Take care. Bye bye.